Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have some time before the Duna window and we are going to transfer our Minmus 4 Rally uh, satellite over there during that window in order to get that completion thing. But we still got some time before that. I was tempted to sort of rush it and just go with that because that's so lucrative and will allow us to unlock the R&D building. But... We haven't really landed on the moon yet. We've done a lot of Minmus stuff. And we've got plant a flag on the moon here and, and explore the moon here. And I think we should just go for that. And oh, it looks like we need to transfer any crew between vessels near the moon too. So basically our normal setup that we were using for Minmus, we'll just have to verify that it really has enough Delta V to land on the moon. But we could probably do it. And it's a, lot, it's a fair amount of money for it. So we could pick that up. And also plant a flag. And it's not going to be picky about location. We're not picking up any stones uh, or anything like that. We just need to go on orbital spacewalk. So, yeah. And that's given us some money. But we could probably unlock some technologies. Uh, we've got 444 science. Of course, we can't get the 160 science technologies. And it might be good to still keep some science for those. But... We're gonna get some more signs from the moon anyway. Uh, so there's some engine upgrades available here, like for Prometheus, which we've used often. And uh, there's the actual normal Bobcat. That's a whole special other thing. And we are looking for the best ISP non-cryogenic engines and the LR-91, which is what that is, might be good. And there's also this weird LR-87. Interesting. I might be up for modifying our launch system based on what we have here. Got some USRBs and everything. So, alright, there's a possibility. I don't think any of these things... Mechjeb features, maneuver and translation. Well, now, <laughs> that's, that's sort of nice. I would like that. I would like to have it be able to do those things. Oh, and the ramified propellant tanks. Hmm. Okay, so that's there. Then recycling. But we aren't going that far yet. Okay, I think this advanced flight control. And... I don't see anything interesting in this fuel systems. Just more fuel tanks. We've got what we need there for now. And heavy rocketry. Advanced construction has some bits and such. And we've got a radial decoupler already, so I'm probably not pressed for that. It's got some of the MKS modules, but uh, we're not building space stations yet. They haven't given us a contract. Uh, once we get a contract, we might pick that up. But I'll leave it be for now so that we have some left over. Now, last time there was an issue of solar storms, and... I, I mean, on these sorts of missions right now, we're not getting enough radiation from the solar storm. Because as long as we orient the craft properly, we're not going to get much radiation, it seems, from the previous episode. So, it's all a matter of, it's a hassle every time that we have a solar storm and they force us to turn so that our butt end is facing the sun. Uh, and I don't need that, really. It says average storm duration 2 hours, storm probability 60%. Um, I mean... Let's... I, I, I'm tempted to turn it off for now. On a long mission, it's gonna be a lot of storms. If we go to Duna, it's gonna be a lot. I don't know if that's how much radiation per hour I want. We'll keep it to 12%. And maybe that's okay. We'll see. Alright, so let me see how to upgrade our mission and whether we can make it better. Okay, so first of all, we don't seem to be getting the Mechjeb thing here at all. No Delta V reading, no nothing. And I'm wondering why. In fact, I unlocked a Mechjeb part, which we shouldn't need. And even adding that on, we don't get the little Mechjeb dialogue. 
So, I've probably got to reinstall MechJeb for starters. We seem to be having a problem with that. Okay, so I haven't done too much. Basically, I replaced the existing tank here on the lander with these Dona Descent Stage tanks because they seem to be a better deal as far as Delta V is concerned. If you take a look, uh, our existing tank was this one, the regular stock fuel tank, and its dry mass is 0 0.0625 tons, carrying 45 liquid fuel. Uh, this is 0 0.0316, basically half, carries 27, which is more than half of the liquid fuel, so its dry mass is better. And it also has two built-in ladders, so yep, we've got, and so we've got two of those, and then the Oscar V as usual and the rest. So that gives us a little bit more delta V to work with for landing on the moon and getting back into orbit around the moon. But it occurs to me that we can't really do the transfer any crew between vessels near the moon. We can rendezvous two vessels because this will be a separate vessel to transfer stage. And, but we can't transfer crew from the lander over into this, unlike our original setup. So let me see if we can pick up a rescue contract for a Kerbal around the moon, and maybe that'll give us a chance. Otherwise, we'll have to skip that part, at least with this setup. Rescue and recovery, nah. We've got a component around Kerbin, and then another Kerbal around Kerbin, but no Kerbal around the moon. So for now, we'll just pass on that part. I'm sure we'll have to rendezvous two things and transfer people. I guess we could pick up this uh, science data from the surface of the moon, though. But yeah, I'm sure we will have opportunity to do that particular part of the Explore the Moon contract in the future, but we won't get the completion award until we do that. So that's a little bit sad, but anyway, we'll get something and we'll get science. We can upgrade this palace engine. There's another version here. It's got less thrust, but better efficiency, it looks like. That does hurt our thrust weight ratio there. After the boosters separate, though. Maybe we should just keep it to its existing configuration. We've already thrust, thrust limited these. We could replace them, but we know this setup, so... This doesn't have a different configuration for that one. Let me just check if I have to buy any. There is the Bobcat though, but the Bobcat's probably heavier than the LR87 that we have down there right now. The Perseus engine. Well, a bit heavier. Now if it's cheaper, it is much cheaper. Well, we might want to get that. Hopefully this cryogenic engine upgrade includes the vacuum one. I haven't seen this Cordele engine before. It seems to have good vacuum ISP and good thrust. Alright, well this increases thrust and specific impulse, so we might as well do that. It increases cost a bit though. We might have to adjust our upper stages to make full use of that, but we'll see. Okay, so we've got that. Now the question is whether we want to replace this engine, which is a 297, 548 kilonewton engine, with the stock Bobcat. Bobcat is cheaper. Let's just see. In total, that's 3,936. Uh, this is 3,856. So this is a little bit better, despite the fact that this engine is heavier. But uh, it's got a really low thrust weight ratio after the boosters separate. Now there was that other engine, Cordele. Oh, well, this configuration doesn't seem so good, but I think the upgraded version might be. Let's see. Keep spending money on engines. All right. This one seems better. Let's see that down there. Well, that's 
3,975 and has a good thrust weight ratio. So I think we'll go with this. Let's hope there's no catches with this particular one. All right, well, who do we send? That is the question. I guess we could still rescue a Kerbal with that pod. Uh, there is that one Kerbal rescue in Kerbinor, but I don't know where that Kerbal is, so maybe we'll just leave that be. Let's keep this simple. One person in the Hermes pod will do. We do have the full shielding on the Hermes pod. Bob hasn't gotten any experience. We've got controllers on everything. Got a controller up here. We could probably do with better control cores, but anyway, we've got them. And there's one underneath there too, so three different control cores. Maybe it'll be alright sending Bob? Uh, let's unbalance it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay, well we don't have to line up with anything as far as I know, though. And Val is a pilot, so that simplifies matters as far as communication is concerned. Uh, off we go. We didn't really wait for throttle up, but we are going. <laughs> I just thought to check whether this thing had gimbling. Well, it's an interesting sort of rocket. Still. And booster separation. Okay, everything looking good so far. We're go for orbit on the, the next stage already, so... Okay, separation and ignition. And bonus explosion. Bearings. And shut down. And long tail off. Uh, anyway, we've got some Delta V left in this stage to help us transfer. Not that we really need it. It should be fine with the next stage to go over to the moon and come back. We do have to leave the... right now it's not showing much in as much as we would need in that stage, but that's because we've got the pot on top hanging out. So let's just make sure Valentina's in there. Separate off the pot on top. And now you can see 4,000 there. Plenty enough to transfer to the moon, capture around the moon, and break orbit and come back into low carbon orbit. But having the extra 1,000 is nice too. Let's see, this guy has its comms, and we'll just uh, make sure to ready its engines. Just trying to move it away. Okay, so that pod will be waiting for Valentina to get back. I guess we'll go with that for now. Verify our life support while we're here before we go. And it seems like we have the amount that we were supposed to. Okay. Well, too bad Valentina hasn't learned how to turn towards nodes yet. And Megjeb is working worse than normal. Now it's not showing up at all. Uh, again, I'll... I'll, I'll install it again and see if that helps but I didn't want to take time right now maybe for landing for once we're actually sending a pilot isn't it, isn't it exciting okay now if we go No more LH2. Yes, that's what happens when we actually use all of it for the engine. All right, separation. Hopefully, yeah, that's the only decoupler. It's docking port otherwise. And ignition. And ignition. All right. Nothing can replace the spark. The sparks is spark is still the best here. Plus our bonus ant engines and the ants are the best for the lander still. 
Apparently, as far as the Blue Dog Design Bureau engines go, they didn't want to surpass stock very much. Except uh, with the cryogenic engines, of course. Okay, it's just a transfer, so that shouldn't be too bad. Well, it was worse than I thought. But we'll RCS it in. Uh, probably when we get there, we'll do a little burn to flatten that out. I don't want to have any complications when it comes to rendezvous. Okay, so we'll do that little correction once we get there. And Delta V is plenty. And just just for the heck of it, I'll turn rear end to the sun. So that, whatever. Um... <laughs> Pretending that we still have to worry about the solar storms. I mean, we do. We have to worry about the solar storms to a lesser extent. We just reduce the... Reduce the frequency of them. So, alright. Okay, we are in moon space. The moon is right there. And we are doing the correction. That's good enough for me. Okay. On we go. Okay, well, we don't have comms at the moment, but that's alright. We have Val. Okay, go. We have plenty of fuel on the transfer stage. The real question is whether we have enough in the pod for the landing and ascent. Okay, that will do. 60 by, I was going for 30, but we got 29-ish. And uh, everything is topped off over here. That's probably all right there. We really just want to get the surface information, but we need to do an orbital spacewalk first. And we'll just get those. We should really have turned off the pressurization in there though. Okay, board. We did carry the extra nitrogen anyway, so we have a lot. Okay, well, let's see about the scent. I suppose we should be facing Kerbin, so we'll probably want to land over here, where it's daylight and facing Kerbin. Well, well, if we're going around this way, we should probably get started now. We transmitted the EVA report. Okay, undock. And Kerbin is visible. That's that. It's got comms. We've got comms. Okay, other view. Surface. We haven't landed anywhere around here so far, so... I mean, our flags are all on Minmus. So we can land pretty much anywhere. And it will be new. Hey, 1,932 is what it says there. I thought we had more than that. I was looking for... I thought the VAB said like 3,000... I'm oh, sorry, 2,100 something. So, I guess, as usual, the Kerbal is a bit more of a burden than expected. But, alright, uh, why don't we use RCS to sort of lower our orbit. That'll give us more apparent Delta V over there. Plenty of ignitions and burn time on these little ants. Okay. Don't really know about the burn timing here. It's not like I have a suicide burn countdown, right, Mechjeb? But, uh, yeah. Still haven't tried to fix Mechjeb yet. I don't really have to keep the engines running the way I do in Realism Overhaul. But it probably makes me feel better. It's a little bit choppy. I think it's trying to load some of the scatter. Oh, there's the scatter, all right. Uh, 
Uh, I think the area right below us is fine. Oh, oh, too much deceleration. Let's just shut that down. At least these engines don't take time to spool up. Okay, use a little bit more Delta V than I'd like on the way down. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, stop hopping, stop hopping. Okay, yeah, we have 872 left. Should be enough. We'll see. Okay, first of all, um, crew report. Might take some time to actually relay that back, though. Yeah, it's waiting. Oh, it hopped again. Okay, well, Valentina can EVA. Uh, oh, the hatch is sort of off to the side. I did not foresee that. I thought it'd be in line with the legs. I guess not. Okay, okay. Don't knock the pod too much. Well, she didn't face plant, so that's that. Okay, plant a flag. That's a contract. Val on the moon. I actually didn't check which biome this is. Beat Jeb. Well, I don't know. Uh, where, where are we exactly? Data. Oh, there's nobody on and there's no comms with it. We can't see the data when there's no comms with it. Fine. Well, Lowlands it says here. So that's fine. Lowlands. Okay, can the jetpack work well on the lunar surface? Okay, it seems that way. Alright, she's grabbed. She can grab here. It's just that the hatch isn't here, apparently. I mean, why couldn't it be in line with the ladder? Anyway, um, I'm... I don't know. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. Guess we'll have to go directly to the hatch or something. Well, or whatever that vague area near the hatch was that allowed us to board. Okay, well, we've got the stuff. On a flag, to the spacewalk, we need to rendezvous now. We'll have to recover the science. We're trying to transfer it, but we can't just yet. So, back up again. We need to use our tiny little Delta V to get back to that. Okay, here we go. Let's quickly check that our inclination is not the wrong way around or anything. We do have some RCS to make up some of the difference if we need to. Well, it's not gonna be enough, it looks like. Well, let's use some RCS here. Even though, with the angle that the R RCS makes, it's not the best thing. Okay, well, let's use the engine a little bit more now. And hopefully we can at least get to orbit, then the other thing can rendezvous with us if necessary. It's got plenty of fuel, though comms always an issue. Okay, well, that's all of our liquid fuel. So, mop propellant, or liquid fuel and oxidizer. So, we've got sort of a tangency over there, and a serviceable periapsis over here. Let me actually bring it down. Unfortunately, we're rendezvousing on the side opposite of comms, though uh, that sort of has a line back. We, we just don't. Well, actually, I probably should stick to this view and prograde. And we'll try and meet up right there. Well, that seems to have comms right now, and I'm going to have it try to do the rendezvous while it still has comms. Uh, are we in, we're not in range yet though. 
Okay, well, it will lose comms. I think six mob propellant should be enough to do the rest. Okay, closing in. Well, we haven't regained comms with it, so we're gonna have to do this the hard way, as it were. Okay, yeah, I guess we'll use caps lock. And lots of magnetism. All right, well, let's shut these down. Lots of Delta V to work with now that the lander is empty. Caps lock off. RCS we don't need anymore. Okay, well, let's plot our way back home. Got to once again capture into low carbon orbit. Haven't done anything about that. You know, eventually we would like to be able to not have to do that first, but... And we must rendezvous with our pod there. So having an equatorial orbit is good. This is probably close enough. And we got the EVA report. We should have gotten the rendezvous two vessels in orbit around... Uh... Two different vessels. I guess it didn't count that our rendezvous because it was launched as the same vessel so we didn't get that but we got the science data from surface of the moon planet flag and orbital spacewalk at least so we got a few things done and some science and plus you know we hadn't done the moon mission before in fact maybe there's a world's first milestone in here planted a flag on the moon and all that business we'll just clear those we could have reused like another one of these but I mean the transfer stage that we had parked around Kerbin, but it is simpler than trying to refuel one of those. But maybe, I mean, I don't think the dry mass of the transfer stage is that high though. The lander cans might be expensive, but not as expensive as they would be in realism overhaul, so. There's sure a lot of Delta V in here right now. We have to use about 1,500 to get to low carbon orbit though. Moon mission ship is the one we're looking for. The sending node's in a good place though. Um, a sending node means that we should probably fix this right now. Or at least when we get out of moon space. Alright, departing the moon. Oh, well, we're on the wrong side facing the sun. Just for safety's sake, we'll flip around. Bye-bye, moon. Okay, go. Sort of crossing this Bedecker. Just a little bit. I want to do another inclination correction here. Okay, perfect inclination. Actually, it uh, looks like we have an intersect point, but we're going to have to do the burn really quickly to actually make that happen. I wonder if some RCS can touch that up a bit. Oh, wait, that was only during time warp, so it's after the first orbit, so we don't want to wait for that. Yeah, that's after four days. We could probably do better. We have plenty of Delta V here. Save ourselves some radiation. How's the radiation been going? Valentina, 2% only. 6% stress. Okay, on this next one we'll cut the engines. Okay, what do we have here? RCS a bit. Uh, it's still 1,200. Jeez. Well, it's only in six hours, so a little bit more radiation, Val. Shouldn't be too bad, right? Okay, ignition. Oh, the separation's increasing. I don't want that. Thrall down, trying to make sure that T minus time at the intersect point actually goes down. It keeps getting pushed further on. That's probably not a good thing.
and then just sort of steering along the 270 line in order to get the separation good. Oh, uh, our periapsis is now negative. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is a problem. Uh, I mean, periapsis is in the atmosphere, not actually negative. It just went into the atmosphere. But I don't like it in the atmosphere, so... Let's just not have that happen. That's a huge separation now, though, thanks to this. Now I feel like we're just gonna have to accept a different tangency point. That one's getting away from us. Okay, in render range and now approaching. Okay, well, we'll just EVA Val over. Rather than trying to dock to it. We'd have to open up this docking port. In oh, actually, yeah, we'd have to open up that docking port anyway, so... Just sort of parking. And EVA. Just in case we just have the surface sample that we can't transmit, so it's the only thing that we're taking here. And off to the other pod. Them? And board. Alright, well. I really need to dump the mop repellent in this. We don't need it. We don't use it at all. Uh, it's not got any RCS ports. The other side would have to do the docking if we wanted to do the docking. But anyway, all that aside, we will wait a little bit and then try to get to the KSC. I want it in daylight anyway. So yeah, we'll just off our engines a little bit again. To get safely away from that. Is that the moon? Is it looking really, really small? The moon always looks smaller than I expect, but that's really tiny if that's the moon right there. I think this was basically where the deorbit location was. I'm not sure, but let's try it. Retrograde? Uh, I feel like that's prograde. <laughs> uh, control from here. There we go. Might as well arm the parachute, make sure that's a good amount of pressure. And separating the trunk, we really didn't use much of that. But, alright. Oof, I don't like the flash and how it shakes all over the place, but... I don't know why SAS disengaged either. Okay, we are coming down. Probably a little bit early. The flame effects begin. Just hoping that nothing's different from any other time. We've already lost quite a bit of a blader. Well, pretty close to the KSC, I think. Still decelerating, of course, but it's looking pretty good for proximity to the KSC. Well, a little bit short, but very close. Well, yeah, we can even... Maybe within a hundred kilometers we're getting down here. Because I think that marker is something at the KSC. Maybe the launch clamps or something. Okay, primary parachute deployment. There may be some interesting stuff over there, but... Uh, oh, wow! That I was not expecting. Huh. It There's a lot of bounciness today in KSP. I did not expect the pod to just bounce like that. Hmm. Alright, well anyway, we can recover it. Okay, we got the surface sample science. And some funds back. Yeah, 90.7 kilometers away from KSC. And Valentina got five experience, but not another star. 
Jeez, it's tough. It's tough around here to get two stars, apparently, unless you've been rescued. So, all right. Well, we managed to land on the moon and return safely back. I think next time we should just time warp to the Duna window. I don't think we're ready for an actual Duna crewed mission yet, though it's tempting. I'll think about it, but... I mean, it's nicer without the solar storms active, I'll tell you that. It's conceivable. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.